All right, get this. Governor Andrew Cuomo still playing the role of a hero in his own mind. More than a year after ordering six COVID patients, sick COVID patients back into nursing homes, contributing to the second highest death toll in the nation. That according to a brand new report. Get this. This week he ran a victory lap after 70% of New Yorker adult New York adults received a vaccine dose, lifting restrictions then on the entire state. Watch how he celebrated. What New York has done is extraordinary. We went literally from worst to first. We're going to light all the state assets, Empire State Building in blue and gold, and we're going to have fireworks. Really? Uh, we're out of ventilators. We don't need ventilators, right? Uh, remember the nursing homes? It wasn't my idea. And then he lied about the numbers. And you remember the death toll? 52,995. He says uh, it wasn't his fault. He got the European virus. And the vaccine? He said he didn't want to use the vaccine because Donald Trump came up with it. That certainly changed, didn't it? There, every step of the way, telling us about it and how she felt, is House Republican Conference Chair, uh, Republican Elise Stefanik. Uh, Congresswoman, welcome, or I said Chairwoman, welcome back. Your reaction to his celebration? My reaction is Andrew Cuomo is the worst governor in America. And he said one thing that's accurate is what New York has done is extraordinary. What it is is an extraordinary failure. Under Governor Cuomo's failed leadership, we've had the highest per capita rates of death. We've lost over 15,000 vulnerable seniors. And we know that Governor Cuomo committed federal crimes when he covered up that number, the toll of COVID and what happened in our nursing homes. On top of this, he's facing multiple investigations, both from the New York State Attorney General and at the federal level, for these potential crimes. He's also facing numerous charges when it comes to sexual harassment and sexual assault against state employees. So he is the worst governor of America. No amount of fireworks paid by New York taxpayers is going to cover that up. The New York people understand that they have—he's been political about how he's led during COVID, and he's pocketed $5 million on his book, running running a victory lap while not serving New Yorkers. And again, if you look at the death toll, it's the highest per capita in the nation. And his warring with our ridiculous mayor didn't help things at all. Their lack of communication and coordination really was uh, damaging. Let's move on and talk about somebody that has a job I can't quite figure out. He's climate czar, and he's traveling the world. His name is John Kerry. Republicans have some questions. What's your question? My question is, what is John Kerry doing? Is he doing this on the taxpayers' dollars? He was appointed by President Biden to serve as the special envoy for climate issues. And John Kerry has been flying around the world, having conversations and back channels with the Chinese Communist Party, having conversations with the Iranians, uh, sharing classified information that puts Israel in a very difficult position. Most recently, he was in Egypt. He has a position that has a seat on the National Security Council. This was not not a Senate confirmed position. So there's no oversight that was done when he was appointed to this. So Republicans want to know what is he actually doing? Is it funded by the taxpayers? Because the American people deserve transparency. We do not want John Kerry selling out America, having conversations with our adversaries around the world. Right. He wants to get a climate change conference going uh, and uh, up and running by November. Uh, he wants everyone ready. He was in Egypt. I'm not sure why, and I'm not sure who's paying, but I would love to get those answers. Uh, next, let's uh, move on and, and talk about something else uh, that matters a lot, and that is Joe Biden. We know he doesn't like to take, uh, go into a lot of unscripted situations, but we're starting to learn more about his script. He was spotted, and we'll take a look at this now. You zoom in on the cards he holds. He's overseas at the G7, NATO summit, and then goes to meet with Vladimir Putin in Geneva. And his cards reveal talking points, anti-Trump talking points on the DOJ. Does this surprise you that I thought this domestic policy issue, you think you'd have maybe some notes on NATO, its history and where it's going, or Russia, Vladimir Putin and people he's killed? No, it's Donald Trump. Yes, unfortunately, uh, the Biden administration and President Biden, we know he always needs staff prepared talking points. But what is really disappointing is on the international stage, presidents typically leave political issues at the water's edge. We talk about, uni about unified American interests abroad, not attacking Republicans in uh, Joe Biden's case. So it was very disappointing to see that rather than, again, talking about important issues like being tough on Russia, uh, whether it's our support for Ukraine to 
counter right. uh, Putin's rise in the region. He instead decided to bring talking points to attack Republicans. That is not what the international community should be hearing, and that's not what we, as elected officials, want to see from our president. And, Congresswoman, lastly, and possibly most important, the New York Times has noticed that Republicans are legitimately outraged and on the same page when it comes to what's happening at the border, a chronic problem that's getting worse. What sticks out that New York Times covered this story? Well, the New York Times was so frustrated that Republicans are unified in our message of outlining the many crises that face America today because of Joe Biden's policies, the border crisis, the economic crisis, the crisis of crime, and more. The New York Times actually wrote a hit piece, but what was amazing about the hit piece, Brian, is they took the time to outline all of these crises that are impacting every American family. It means Republicans are winning, we have momentum on our side, and we're talking about issues that matter to the American people, and we're holding Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi accountable for their failed socialist policies. Perfect segue to our next segment. Uh, Congresswoman, congratulations on your pregnancy. You kept it secret for quite a long time, as we mentioned in the break. Uh, that's why you're on the Intelligence Committee, uh, because you can be trusted with that. But I know it's your first child, and it's got to be exciting, and you're still going 100 miles an hour. Uh, really respect that. Congresswoman, thanks so much. Thank you so much, Brian. All right, meanwhile, hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.